Ayode Ijisheson is the founder and CEO of King's Word Ministries International with churches and missions in North America, Africa, Europe and Asia. He provides apostolic oversight over all the churches and missions of the ministry from his base in Chicago, United States. He also travels extensively around the globe. He has a mandate from God to raise a supernatural army in the nations. He has raised several thousands of believers in different nations through the Supernatural School of Ministry Sessions and King's Word Training Institute program. Originally trained as a pharmacist, he later pursued a doctorate program in Christian Theology from International Miracle Institute, Pensacola, Florida. He has authored 20 books on different topics. Dr. K and his wife, Mayowa, are blessed with two children, Tolu and Tami. With great joy in our hearts, please welcome Pastor Kayade Ijisheson to the Youth Aflame Conference 2020, the online edition. Glory to God. God is raising a generation. God is raising a people. God is preparing an army for himself. A people committed to his cause. A people that will not be distracted. A people that know their mission and the people that are sold out to their mission, a people that focus on their mission, a people that will go to any lane to see their mission accomplish and deliver is preparing the people. Come on, thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The supernatural the supernatural generation. I want us to go to the book of Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. The supernatural generation. Matthew chapter 14. I will start reading from verse 22, Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. It says, immediately Jesus and his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to the other side while he sent the multitude away. He sent the multitudes away, but you know, the disciples were sent on an assignment. I want you to take note of that. Jesus always have assignment for disciples until you literally turn yourself into a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ, fully committed to his purpose, sold out completely and ready to follow him as a disciple. There are certain things where the agenda and the purpose and the plan of God is concerned that you will not be letting. Jesus had an assignment but look at what he did. He sent the multitudes away. In fact, the Bible says after he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And now when the evening came, he was alone there. So the disciples were sent on an assignment. The multitudes were sent away. He loved them all. He could only commit a critical mission in the hands of the disciples. Who is a disciple? A disciple is someone who understands that there is an assignment beyond the form. Can't go for the presence of God. A disciple is aware that there is a mission to be accomplished. So, so when evening came, he was alone there. And in verse 24, the Bible says, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now, first of all, I want you to realize that this was a mission sanctioned by Jesus. And yet, they found themselves being tossed by the waves in the middle of the sea. You know, there's an assumption by some people that, I believe ignorant, I would say, that once uh, something is sanctioned by the law, something is directed by the Lord. You're going to just have a smooth ride. There's not going to be opposition. Everything's just going to be a lie. Now, listen, in as much as God will supply forces of evil to make his purpose for your life become a reality, 
there will always be opposition. In fact, opposition is one of the indicators of the will of God. I repeat, opposition is one of the indicators of the will of God. The Bible says, he said, no one will live a godly life in Christ Jesus without suffering persecution. So these disciples, they were on a mission that was initiated and directed by Jesus. Jesus literally sent them ahead of himself on a mission. Now they found themselves in the middle of the sea being tossed, being tossed by the waves. The wind was contrary to them, the Bible says. And in verse 27, now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. Number one, Jesus will never abandon you when you are in trouble. I need somebody to declare it. I will never be abandoned. I don't know what I'm talking to right now. You feel abandoned. You feel you are a lie from the pit of hell. Jesus will never abandon you in the midst of an affliction. There's something about the very present help in times of trouble. The mere fact that you don't feel it, the, the mere fact that you can't sin does not mean he is not there. The psalmist says in Psalm 23 and verse 4, he said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. I need somebody to shout, he is with me. He is with me. You are not by yourself. The affliction is there, but guess what? There's a bigger presence than the affliction. Is the presence of your Savior. Is the presence of your helper. Is the presence of the Almighty. He said, because of his presence, I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and I will fear no evil. You know, the enemy wants to communicate like, like the situation, the challenge, the the the, the that season is so huge that God cannot even get into it. But I want to let you know there is a God who has gone before you, who has gone ahead of you. And that's why he's the very present help in times of trouble, right in the midst of the trouble you are dealing with. God will let you know that I'm right there. Oh my God, somebody needs to shout, he's right there. Hey, lo, 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 so taba, he's right there. I'm not by myself. I'm not abandoned. So Jesus walked into their situation while they were being tossed by the waves of the sea. In the midst of a contrary wind, Jesus walked in. But the other thing I want you to see, apart from the fact that Jesus identified with them in times of trouble, is the very fact that Jesus walked on what troubled them. These people were being troubled by the waves on the sea. They were being tossed around by the turbulent and the violent nature of the waves. But guess what? Upon the same waves that brought trouble, that was the same waves that Jesus was treading upon. That tells you something. What might be scaring you does not scare your Lord. It does not scare him. God is not running around, panting, scared, desperate thinking about what he's going to do to fix your situation mm -mm. that situation is under control jesus walked on the same waves of the sea that troubled the disciples and that to, that's to let you know that there's nothing troubling you right now that is not under the authority of jesus look at it he said jesus walked on the sea the sea that brought their trouble was the same thing that Jesus walked on. Oh, 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 glory to God. Do you know if you see what I'm seeing by revelation, you will get all excited in the midst of your difficult situation, in the midst of your challenges, because you know Jesus is not just standing by your side, pitying you, rubbing you on your head. He's walking on the very sea that is bringing trouble to you, just to let you know that I'm, a st I'm still on top of things. I'm still in charge of situation. I've got you covered. Jesus walked on the sea. Say with me, say, Jesus is walking on the sea. That might be, that seemed to be troubling me, so I declare in the name of Jesus, I will not be troubled. He walked on the sea to let them know that there's no element of nature that is above him, but every element of nature is beneath him. There's nothing you are being subjected to for day that has the capacity to dominate you. If that thing dominates you, it's because you let it. He said, whatsoever you bind on, I shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you lose on, I shall be losing in heaven. You are that powerful. You can bind and expect the authority to be delivered. You can lose and expect the authority to be delivered. So Jesus walked on the very sea where they were deriving their trouble. And in verse 25, he said, now, now, verse 26, he said, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, he's a ghost, 
and they cried out for fear. They cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, be of good cheer, be encouraged. Do, do not be afraid. Get used to it. This is my method of operation. Why is this scaring you? Because I'm working on an element of nature? No way. No way. You should not be scared by that. By covenant, you are covered. I don't know who I'm talking to. You have been spending time with friends, with magazine, with news media, with everything but the Lord and his people. It's time to find your way back to the Lord and his people because your solution is in the Lord and by the people. Just shouting a few amen, amen, will not cut the chase. You need a stronger koinonia with the Lord. Say, Lord, help me in this season. I can't do it by myself. I need your help. If you will not help me, I will not be able to survive. Can you pray that prayer of, 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 of consecration consciously? Because that's what it takes to turn on the supernatural. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody is coming into such an experience of the supernatural after this series of teaching and preaching tonight, and you will never be able to recover again. There's going to be such a movement, such a transition by the Spirit of God that will take you from point A to point B. It's just that point B seems so far from point A, because when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Your promotion will be like a dream. Your elevation will be like a dream. Something massive is coming your way that will change your status forever. You are about to experience the hand of God. So Jesus showed up. And look at the instruction. He said, he said, be of a good job, good job, do not be afraid. I, he said, be of good job and do not be afraid. Be of good job and do not be afraid. God is cooking something massive for our generation. And he needs the people he can count on. He needs the people he can trust on. There's so many things I could have thought of ministry. But there's something which is so strong upon my heart, which has to do with knowing and designing your season. Knowing and designing your season because God is going to turn out something massive out of this present situation. What the devil meant for evil, God is going to flip it around and turn it to good. Who am I talking to? I said, God is going to pick what the devil has been doing, has been wanting to use to cause confusion. God will twist it around, he will turn it around and use it for his glory in the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, my generation made up our mind that we not bow our knees to the world, we not bow our knees to cerebralism, cerebralism, we not bow our things to the things that don't profit the spirit because man is essentially a spirit he has a soul but it's not a soul he's still a spirit from his spirit that's where the center of god is he controls everything from the spirit so it's so important that a generation be raised that is involved involved and informed about the things of the spirit so that generation can't get lost anyhow they keep on receiving food they keep on receiving food this is what we do. so in, uh, in Matthew chapter 14, we can see now that Jesus sent four disciples and before you know it, there was a stupid demon that was questioning them and you know the next thing, some of them died, some of them survived, but God said, I have you covered, I have you covered, I have you covered. No evil shall be for you, no plague shall come near your dwelling place. I declare in the League of Nations, you will see such a hand of God upon the people that have been diagnosed with COVID. I declare in the name of Jesus, these people are held supernaturally, they are supported, they are promoted, and they are positioned for manifestation in the name of Jesus. So it's so, so important. It's so, so important. You need to understand how it works. God needs you informed. You need to be informed. You need to be formed. So Jesus said, be of good cheer and, and do not be afraid. And Peter answered them and said, Lord, if it is your will, answer me to come or bid me to come. You are on, on the water. So he arose and when Peter had come out of the boat, he walked into the water to the ghost. He walked out of the, he walked in the water to go to Jesus. Now, look, I want us to look at verse 29 again. So he said, in other words, Jesus said, come. Peter asked a very simple question. He said, if it were you, bid me to come. He dared Jesus. God is looking for a people that will dare, that will dare God and dare the supernatural in this season. People that will tell the devil, devil, you and your boys cannot run me. You can't run my family. You can't run my career. You can't run my ministry. You can't run anything called me. So I drive you out. I expel you and I receive the glory of God. I receive the glory of God. So come that God, that Jesus said, was strong enough. It was strong enough to keep things running, to keep things moving forward. 
I don't know about you. You are coming to an experience of fever. And things will just begin to open up. It will be from one level of glory to another level of glory. Because there is a prophecy over your life that must be fulfilled in your lifetime. So I declare in the name of Jesus that you receive the fullness of the capacity of God to be all you are called to be in the name of Jesus. Immediately he said, be of good cheer and do not be afraid. Verse 20 says, oh, Peter, said, and Peter came and said, Lord, it is you. Answer me to come to where you are. And in verse, verse 29, the Bible says, Jesus said, when Peter had come out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Jesus invited Peter. Peter asked to be invited for the, for, to, to take a walk with him in journey. And Peter responded to that call. Peter could be trusted. Peter was the confidant. Fine, he was also work on the government side, but you need people with such integrity in the season to be all God intends you to do. He needs people that will be thorough. People that will not just get carried away with names, big names, but people that will say, no way. There's no way this should be that expensive. Mm -mm. A generation sold out, a generation committed, a generation, you know, just so connected to the social media, so, 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 so social platform operations. A generation that will go all the way to manifest God in their generation. See, after me, say, I am part of that generation that represents God adequately everywhere in the name of Jesus. Now, there are five things I want to share with you tonight before I pray for you. There's a, there's a person with a chest pain. That chest pain is disappearing. Toothache is disappearing right now. General fatigue, be gone in the name of Jesus. There are five things I want to share with you. You know, in Ezekiel 47, the Bible talks about the vision that Ezekiel saw when he walked. He walked into the lower hands of the river by a man. And, you know, he talked about covering a thousand cubits where the water reached the ankle, but God will not let him stop. He was pressed for that. To another thousand cubits, and that place they saw the water rose to the name level, and they were like, Oh my god, what happened? And they go went another cubit and they found that it you know it has now become a river, a river in which somebody can sleep, can swim. I mean, a river where somebody can swim, a river of God. But it all started as just flow, flows like this, led into that river. Are you ready to jump into the river? If you are ready, there are five things I'm going to read through. Number one, you need a depth of consecration. You know, you could see that in Ezekiel 47, they walked all the way from the beginning of the temple to the end of the temple until the water reached the knee level. They were that committed. Talking about the depths God is calling us to, for us to effectually be the light that will shine brightness to the world, we need to be committed to divine consecration. Consecration. Literally say, Lord, I won't run you by me. But going forward, I will run you by me. It's what you want that I want. That's a powerful prayer. Very, very important prayer of consecration. The second prayer is what I call the, 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 the season. The prayer. Hallelujah. I will make sure that I capture the essence very well. Glory to God. Yes, I call it the debt of of the debt the debt of dedication. There's a debt of consecration of you coming to a point of admitting that God has a purpose, He has a will, He has an agenda, and that will is even greater than God. That God will pick anybody to be a platform for His expression. So there's a great depth of consecration, knowing fully well that you don't know any, everything about you, but there's a way you will comport yourself and you'll be acceptable, you'll be favorable. There must be some layers of deadly, being deliberate for you to be able to have stability in that area. There's a depth of, there's a depth of consecration. Then two, there's a depth of dedication. What is dedication? I wrote a few things down that I want to share with you a depth of consecration, which has to do with acknowledging and embracing God's will, purpose, and agenda. Say with me, say God has a will, he has a purpose, and he has an agenda. And all these three must be embraced and acknowledged. Secondly, there's a depth of dedication and them of dedication that you as a believer, you must grow into. We talk about the depth of consecration. What about the depth of dedication? What is dedication? 
Dedication is a demonstration of commitment. Is a demonstration of what commitment. So where God is concerned, we're talking about demonstration of commitment towards God. When somebody is dedicated, is sold out, is all out. He doesn't have space for any other thing apart from that thing. And God is saying, will you choose my thing as your thing? Will you come to that place that you are fully dedicated to my cause and you are willing to do anything to put smiles on some baby's face somewhere in the world? Very, very important. There's a depth of what dedication. So consecration speaks of separating yourself away from, you know, all the stuff that might distract you. While dedication now says, talks about now strengthening that position and making sure you receive what it takes to be so established in other words, to become your future, the future anticipated. So there's a depth of, uh, uh, of, of, of consecration. There's a depth of dedication. And the top, the top depth that you must be able to reach, I talked, I talked about that man that walked all the way to, the, to, to that place where it became a river, a depth, a place of depth. For you to walk in the next step, which is the depth of revelation, you can afford to be ignorant. You can afford to run on you on, 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 on just regular stream without direction. You must be intentional. There's a depth of dedication. You must understand who God is. You must understand the basic things of God, how to take authority over the devil, how to find full expression as a child of God is very, very important. Extremely important. So you don't get carried away. You get submitted and you say, Lord, I receive all that you have for me. I will not be denied, but I will manifest all. So there's a debt of dedication that is required to keep your fire burning all the time. Number four, there's what is called the debt of fellowship. Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13, verse 40, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship. There is a fellowship of the Holy Spirit that you and I are entitled to, to, that you and I need to enjoy to make the most of this season. And if you are going to be relevant in this season, you must come up either to the place of depth of fellowship where the Holy Spirit is really taken as a person. More not, that it, not, not, not like you, you, you see an animal or you see something you dislike. The Holy Spirit ought to be revered. He ought to be honored. He ought to be, you know, respected. So there's a depth of dedication. A dedication. There's a depth of depth, uh, depth of consecration, depth of dedication, and depth of fellowship. Koinonia, sharing together, participating. Very, very important. And the next depth is what I call the depth of the depth of fellowship. Now, I guess I missed the third one. The first one is depth of consecration. The second one is depth of dedication. The third one is the depth of revelation. What is revelation? Revelation, you know, the, the best scripture that comes to heart is First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that the eye, it talks about, I mean, chapter 2, verse 17, it talks about the eyes of understanding being enlightened. Light comes in. And once that light comes in, that ignorance, that darkness of ignorance is expelled. And the moment that darkness of ignorance is expelled, you can now enjoy the fullness of the life and the abundance of God. A lot of people cannot enjoy the life and the abundance that Jesus brought because they are stuck in the ways of the dead, of the, of the whole. They are stuck with the old. And God said, cooperate with the new and experience all the things I have for you. So there's a depth of, 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 of consecration, depth of concept, I mean, depth uh there's a depth of dedication and there's a depth of fellowship of the spirit. And the last one is a depth of revelation. 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 You know, we are products of revelation. The Bible says the things belong to God, but the things which are revealed, they belong to us and our children. There's a revelation that God wants to bring you in. I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. I declare your capacity for revelation is put in place in this season and by revelation, I announce your dominance everywhere. You are breaking through on the right, on the left, on every side. You are experiencing the glory of God. There's a depth of revelation that is very, very important. Then we can now talk about the depth of fellowship, which has to do with the engagement of the Spirit of God. And the last but not the least is the depth of, it's the depth of revelation. There's a depth of fellowship. There's a third depth, which is very, very important. The death of religion speaks of not being stuck in religion, religion and back statement and all the natural things to the extent that you have no time for the things of the spirit. The last thing is the depth of sensitivity. The Holy Spirit is not just in you 
for vacation purposes. Is in you to get some job done. Is in you to provide the leadership, the much needed leadership. After all, the Bible says in Romans chapter eight verse fourteen, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as long as the Spirit of God is available and present, I declare you can be released to all that God has called you to. You are not restrained. You are not stopped. But you are going all the way to manifest the glory of God and to declare His Majesty everywhere. Somebody say, I have helped. Is my very present help in times of trouble. No trouble will cover me up because the help of God is mine. The help of God is mine. Tonight, there's going to be a divine activation. There are gifts inside of you that have been loined to mat. I speak to them at this hour and I say, come alive. That's it. That's it. The gifts of the spirit have not find expression in your life until now. I declare, come alive. There is a generation that is about to be unleashed. And remember those five things? They must have a depth of say, of the depth of consecration, so that of the will of God, so that of the purpose and the embrace of God, the depth of dedication. Dedication goes a step higher because there's a, a conscious demonstration of commitment. Then the third one, the depth of revelation, getting to a point that the eyes of your understanding are lighted and you are flooded with light and you know what God is saying in the different aspects of your life. That's what it takes. That's what it's going to take, a depth of dedication. And the fourth one is a depth of fellowship. Treating the Holy Spirit as a friend. He's a friend and you ought to treat him like it. You ought to engage him. You ought to listen to him. You, know, you, need, you need him in the time of worship. But beyond worship, you need him for your lifestyle. And the last but not the least, there's a depth of revelation. That is, I mean, the depth of sensitivity. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 says, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way when you go to the right and when you go to the left. There is a supernatural direction that is so needed for you to maximize your purpose. Everybody under the sound of my voice, I want you to open up yourself to God right now. Because something's going to hit you in your living room, wherever you are, is the power of God. It's going to knock out every distraction out of your life and bring you into a place of, you know, of, 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 yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. The power of God is being released right now. There are people in different places that are being helped right now. That's it. Help. There's a building up of help on your behalf. That's it. Help. Somebody shout, help. It's Can you scream it again? Say, help. Ma, 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 ma. Embro lokono. Ma to susube kriya la kote kriya la kosa da ba ba ba. Shout, help. Ma, 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 ma. Ma to krobala. Mala krobala krobala kriala kosota bala kriala. Shout it again. Shout help. Help. Come on, scream it again. Say help. I declare help over you. A generation is being activated. That's what this afternoon is all about. Help. There's an activation by the Spirit of God. It's taking place in your room, wherever you are. That's it. Ma to sakuata. And I had the Lord say, come up either. Come up here to a place of expression. Help. Help. Help is available for you. Help is available. As many people as are sick receive healing right now. That's it. Help. As many people as are distracted be activated right now. That's it. Help. Help is released for you in the name of Jesus. Wow. Glory to God. Glory to God. I can feel the glory of God covering you, covering your room. That's it. Things are turning around. Things are turning around. Things are turning around. You are being activated. Remember, five layers of depth. Depth of consecration. Depth of dedication. Depth of revelation. Depth. 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 depth of fellowship with God and depth of sensitivity, capacity to hear God like never before. And behold, you are called to be. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. That's it. Lord, we praise you. We give you praise. Lord, 
I release help in your direction right now. Be helped in Jesus' name. Oof. Oof. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. Can you wave your hands to Jesus wherever you are? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to come back much later. and But in the meantime, I want you to just soak in, in the revelation. I, I thought I was going to speak much longer, but God says, just stick to these five things. I repeat. Depth of consecration. Depth of what? Dedication. Depth of revelation. Revelation in the word of God. Not being ignorant. Not just walking in zeal. Or being informed, understanding the grace of God, the covenant of grace you are under, and how to drop it by faith. Then depth of fellowship with God. A generation that knows how to engage God by spirit. And lastly, depth of sensitivity. A generation that can pick up the signals of heaven. The Bible talks about the men of Issachar who are men of understanding, who knew what Israel ought to do. I declare you are one of those men. You know what to do. And you dive into it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you. We praise you in Jesus' name. I'll be back much later for a time of...